God, where to begin? Where to begin? Hi, my friends. It's Tom with Watchin' River. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're doing okay. And I'm so glad you're here. The Lord has made us another great day. And we will rejoice and be glad in it as we await this pre-tribulation rapture of the church as we occupy. And uh, I believe that rapture could happen anytime. I am looking up every single day. Sorry to say today, I'm too busy to talk about food or give snack suggestions. If you want a snack, you know, I can't give you one. But I can say that a blueberry muffin and a hazelnut coffee sounds good to me if I had the time. But I don't. I am in God's Promises for Your Every Need. Great little book here. It just takes scriptures and puts them in categories. I'm on page 40. We'll read a few scriptures and then we'll get to what's going on in the world. This is from, again, page 40. Jesus is your security. These three verses in John 10 are amazing. Listen to this. John 10, 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. That should give you such great comfort, you guys. So incredible. Let's go to Romans 8. Verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So beautiful. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And one more, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You realize if you have that Holy Spirit dwelling in you, do you realize the gift that is? Do you realize how amazing that is? Look, if you don't know Jesus please keep watching the video because it's so vitally important in these last days to know who he is and what he did for you and to get that Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And I'll show you how. It's really easy. Jesus did the hard part. All right, so we are always looking for, as people who are kind of prophecy obsessed as we are and waiting for our blessed hope for Jesus to take us home, which, oh man, we're getting close. But we are always looking for and waiting for that peace and safety moment and trying to figure out what is that peace and safety moment that leads to sudden destruction, which I believe is the rapture of the church and a lot of other things on earth simultaneously. But let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 through 6 together. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, not when it happens, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. That's all geared toward Israel. And then it comes to us. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. It shouldn't shock us. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Always remember when somebody tells you to stop watching. Somebody said it in the comments this morning. Stop watching. Just try to win people to Christ. It's like, you know what? You can do both. God made our brains pretty efficient. We can actually watch for our blessed hope and waiting for Jesus to come get us while we proclaim the everlasting gospel that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again. We can do it simultaneously. All right. So I think the election of Donald Trump brings that moment of saying peace and safety or peace and security. I believe the election of Donald Trump brings it closer than ever. And remember, again, it's while they're saying peace and safety. We don't have to see the peace and safety that they're talking about. Look at these headlines, okay? 
This is from uh, Ma'ariv, which is a Middle East um, online paper. Do what is necessary. Trump handed Netanyahu an open check for actions against Iran. Trump's dramatic victory in the U.S. presidential elections was seen in Israel as an opportunity to continue the campaign against Hamas and Hezbollah and even consider an attack aimed at disrupting the Iranian nuclear program. A senior official in the defense cabinet said that the period of overlap in the U.S. may provide Israel with a window of opportunity to act against the Iranian nuclear program, which Netanyahu sees as an existential threat. In the past two months, Israel has significantly damaged Hezbollah's capabilities and destroyed some of Iran's air defense systems, which increased Netanyahu's optimism in a speech he gave on October 26. The prime minister said that Israel now has greater freedom of action than ever against its sworn enemy. And I really believe with Trump saying, look, get this done before I'm inaugurated, do it. I really think, and you got to realize that once this, the, 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 when they say peace and safety, that's going to be in some period where they really think it can happen. Is it going to happen after the inauguration? I don't know. I, I think it could happen before then. And I think it leads to the rapture. But it could be after the inauguration. But I, I'm leaning towards before. This is from Bloomberg. Citing an Israeli source, the transition period in the United States may provide Israel with the opportunity to damage Iran's nuclear program. So there you have it again. Here's another one from the Denver Post. Trump promises to, this is just, you know, Trump promises to bring lasting peace to a tumultuous Middle East but fixing it won't be easy. Donald Trump will return to the presidency at a time of unprecedented conflict and uncertainty in the Middle East. But Trump's history of strong support for Israel, coupled with his insistence during the campaign that the war in Gaza should end quickly, the isolationist forces in the Republican Party, and his penchant for unpredictab um, unpredictability raise a mountain of questions over how his second presidency will affect the region at this pivotal moment. You know, we're just sitting here at a time period where, now, do I think Iran is going to get, uh, I'm sorry, do I think Israel is going to attack Iran's nuclear facilities? Absolutely, 100%. Yes, they're going to. I really believe they're going to, and I think that's soon. Is that going to happen before Trump is inaugurated or after? I happen to think before. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, if you guys know that. But I think it's going to happen before. And, and why do you think I tell you guys I'm looking up every day? I just, I, I'm looking what's going on right now. And it's really, really strange because, man, there are wacky rumors since Trump was elected going on online. Yesterday, it was all over the place, all over X, all over Telegram. It was Iran-backed Houthis declare a ceasefire shortly after Donald Trump victory. Our operations in international waters were purely defensive, and we announced their final cessation, like they're going to stop attacking. The Houthis, makers of the Houthi bar. Total rumor. And what happened was I started seeing this in my comments, and it was intriguing me because I saw people saying the Houthis are going to stop. And I also saw Hamas wants a ceasefire deal ever since Trump's been elected. Those are both rumors. Um, I saw it another headline, Houthis end war against the IDF. No more attacks as Donald Trump wins. It, it's I, So this morning I woke up after seeing these rumors all over and thought, I got to really find out what's going on. And it was nowhere. It was just on X and Telegram, and it was all over the place there. But I couldn't find it anywhere else. Beginning of Sorrows News had a good one. They they, they put this out on Telegram uh, last night. Rumor, Houthi spokesman says, our operations in international waters were defensive only, and we announced their final cessation. The truth, the Houthi military spokesman did not issue any statement about stopping the group's operations against ships. And the Houthi-affiliated media did not quote any statements of this kind from the group's leaders. You know, the more 
and and then they said the circulation of this rumor coincides with the results of the pre preliminary results of the U.S. elections, which showed the victory of President Trump. Um, the the closer we get to the rapture, I really believe the more we're going to see like we're going to have to really look closely at everything that's covered because the rumors are just insane. Since since he got elected, they've they've actually ramped up. This is from the Times of Israel. Additional squadron of U.S. F-15 fighter jets set en route to Israel ahead of an expected Iran attack. So for a while, this was another rumor was, oh, Iran's not going to. They're not, they're not even planning an attack anymore. And they're still planning an attack. The United States is continuing to send forces to the Middle East ahead of an expected Iranian attack on Israel with flight tracking sites showing American F-15 aircraft en route to Jordan. According to Haaretz, at least 12 of the jets are on their way to the region, joining the fighter planes that are already deployed there. There is no formal announcement from the U.S. military. Iranian leaders have warned that they will mete out a punishing reprisal attack against Israel for a series of retaliatory strikes on October 26th. Reports have indicated the Iranian attack may come as soon as this week and that projectiles could be launched from Iraq. Earlier this week, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered several B-52 Stratofortress um, bomber aircraft, tanker aircraft, and Navy destroyers to be deployed to the Middle East. So that's what's going on there. This is from Israel Today. We are totally outgunned, an Iranian soldier inadvertently admits to Israeli media. This one's interesting. It comes, uh, if it comes to open war and Israel is unrestrained by Western powers, Iran doesn't stand a chance. That was the conclusion hinted at by an Iranian soldier in a media interview earlier this week. What the Iranian soldier didn't know was that he was speaking to a local source who works for Israel's Channel 14 News. ruh -ro, in the words of Scooby. Um, the Israeli systems and forces are far more advanced and professional than the capabilities of the Islamic Republic, whose equipment is outdated, he admitted. Man, I wouldn't want to go back and face his general. <laughs> All right, what else? Also... Iran has released a new threatening video, and they are threatening to take out President Trump before he's inaugurated. I saw the video, and uh, yeah, they're threatening it. Uh, also, Amir Sarfati said Netanyahu just talked with Trump. This was about 24 hours ago, a little, a little less than 24 hours ago. Netanyahu just talked with Trump over the phone for about 20 minutes. Both leaders were targeted by Iran, and both will take care of business. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that. Iran announced that the Trump win makes no difference to their plans. Makes no difference. And what else? From the Times of Israel, Hezbollah's new leader says no diplomatic agreement before Israel ends aggression. In a second TV address as head of the terror group, he's still around, Naeem Kassam uh, says only one thing can stop this war of aggression. That is that that is the battlefield, adding that U.S. election election will not impact the talks. In his TV address on Wednesday, yesterday, the new Hezbollah leader said a diplomatic settlement to the terror group's ongoing conflict was still possible, but only once Israel stops its military campaign in Lebanon. There you go. It was his second televised speech. I just can't believe the guy's still alive, honestly, because Israel's gotten so, gotten rid of these guys so quickly and finds them. But it was his second speech since taking the helm of the group following the Israeli assassination of longtime Grand Puba Nasrallah in September. And he said that the war will only end after Israel stops its aggression against Lebanon. And only at that point will Hezbollah agree to indirect negotiations. In other words, none. So they will keep driving them up beyond the Latani River by force. You know. What else? You guys okay?
I hope you guys are okay. Somebody was very mad at me that I offered them a cookie yesterday. I said, go get a cookie. They said, we are not children. And I thought, wow, well, I'm a 61-year-old child because I love a good cookie. <laughs> or two, sometimes three. Uh, this is from the beginning of Sorrow's News. The spokesman for the Iraqi army denied the reports that his country is expected to be used as a base from which an Iranian attack will be launched against Israel and claimed the reports are intended to serve as a false pretext for Israeli attacks against us. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors that Iran's going to use Iraq territory to launch their retaliation from there. Iraq is saying, no, that's fake news. You guys just want to say that so Israel starts attacking us. What's the truth? Time will tell. Time always figures it out, doesn't it? God is in control. Completely. I don't worry about any of this crazy stuff. Hezbollah has released a video titled, You Will Not Be Able to Bring Them, the Settlers, Back to the North. Hezbollah says they will not allow the settlers to return and they promise to expand the range of evacuations and expel more settlers. So Hezbollah is definitely hardlining it. They haven't lightened up the rhetoric. So yesterday, according to the IDF, as of 11 o'clock last night, there were 170 projectiles that were fired by Hezbollah into Israel, but not a ton of damage. Also, the IDF said that they struck Hezbollah targets in the Dahi area of Beirut. Said a short while ago, in an intelligence-based strike, the IAF struck command centers, weapon storage facilities, and terrorist infrastructure in the Dahi area of Beirut. All the targets were embedded in the heart of a civilian area, an additional example of Hezbollah's cynical exploitation of Lebanese civilians as human shields, and prior to the strikes, numerous steps were taken to mitigate the risk to civilians, including using precise munitions, surveillance, and issuing advance warnings to the population in the area. There was also a lot, a lot of airstrikes in Beirut in the last night. I mean, I saw, what, one, two, three, I saw, saw over 10 videos of hard strikes in Beirut. So that's basically what's going on in the Middle East. Now we've got from insider paper, China's Xi calls for stable U.S. ties and a message to Trump. Chinese President Xi Jinping on Thursday called for stable, healthy and sustainable ties between Beijing and Washington in a message to U.S. President-elect Donald Trump, the state media said. In a congratulatory message to Trump, Xi pointed out that the history has shown that China and the United States benefit from cooperation and suffer from confrontation, the broadcaster said. So, there you go. Nothing from Kim Jong-un today that I could find. So, he must not need the attention today. So, we're not going to give it to him. Let's move on. <laughs> Earthquakes picked up a little bit. Last 24 hours, 40 over 4.0 and 13 over 5.0. All right. Take my hand. Let's go into Clown World together. We'll hold hands and we'll do it together, okay? This is from Gadget Review. Meta... <laughs> All right, I see. I know where this is going. I just think it's kind of funny. Meta's AI-powered robot hand... Robot hand... Raises concerns for human workers. <laughs> I've got so many jokes. I'm not going to do it. Uh, TechCrunch reports that Meta has unveiled a groundbreaking robotic hand that can feel, it can touch, marking a significant advancement in robotics that could threaten jobs across multiple industries. While this technological leap promises innovation, it also signals a future where even skilled manual labor could be replaced by machines uh, that match human dexterity. They say it processes touch signals in real time and it matches human level sensitivity. The development of rob robots with human-like touch sensitivity could accelerate job displacement in industries requiring uh, manual dexterity. They're saying it threatens skilled manual labor jobs and lacks current worker protections. While Meta promotes this technology's potential for advancing research and improving human-robot interactions 
Labor advocates warn about the need for proactive policies to protect workers as these technologies mature. So it's just a hand? <laughs> I, they didn't talk about it being hooked to a robot. You know, so I'm immediately thinking it's just a hand and it can feel and it can, you know, it, but can it give you a high five? Can that hand give you a high five? You know, talk about new meaning to the word, you know, give the guy a hand. <laughs> Maybe it's a clown hand. Did you ever think of that? Could be a clown hand. It could be put on a, will there be humanoid clown robots? I bet you there will in clown world. I bet. <laughs> All right. Enough clowning around. Let's go to some comments of the day, shall we? Let's do it, if I can find them. Joshua, many are saying we will finally have peace. Uh-oh, peace and safety, and then boom? You're right, Joshua, and I can't believe the peace and safety talk since Trump was elected. I just can't believe it. Many, many think, you know, incredible things are coming to the United States because of this election. I'm just thinking it's, it's speeding up the rapture, honestly. Dan, uh, Daniel, I'm celebrating because Christ is king. Every day he is my king and the only one I serve. He is my savior, even though I don't and never have or never could begin to deserve his love or his salvation, amen. But through his grace, I am saved. He is my kinsman, redeemer, and no matter if I wait and die of old age or he comes before the sun sets today, God is good and Christ will be my king. Man, that is a good frame of mind you're in there, Daniel. Thank you. Man, amen. D. Islander. Dear brothers and sisters around the world, focus on Jesus alone, our only hope. He is coming. Don't be caught off guard. Praying for you all wherever you may be. Love you all. Shalom. Thank you. Amen. J.C. Peep. It seems like folks are looking for a king to fix things. Hasn't that been the trouble with human beings since the beginning of time here? Looking at mere man to help us instead of our creator king? It doesn't seem like that has changed at all. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I'm homesick for a place I've never been. And I want to be where love came from to begin with. Ooh, I love that. God's timing is perfect, and I'm feeling ready to go home. Thank you for that. Amen. Thank you. Let's do one more. Heather, good morning, Brother Tom and Precious family. To be honest, I don't feel any different today than I did yesterday. We are still strangers in this dark and fallen world, and God is still on his throne with Jesus at his right hand, awaiting the much-anticipated command, to go get your bride. I love you all, and we'll see you soon, Maranatha. Amen. Heather, thank you. Thank you. You know, we're sitting here in these last days. Oh, how do I say this? I don't think I can say it properly. Let me just say that I'm, I'm really glad the election's over. <laughs> I will say that. And I just don't, I just don't want to get into the politics of it. But let me just say that I think Donald Trump getting elected speeds up the rapture, even more so than if Kamala had gotten elected. Um, because he is the man that can talk peace in the Middle East fast. And I'm not saying he's the Antichrist because he's not. But he is a man who has shown in the last time he served that he was very pro-Israel. And um, and I, I just, I, I think we're in his time period right now. And I tell you this ad nauseum that I look up every day. And when I saw that, he won in a landslide. And when right away the talk was peace and security, like he's the one who can bring peace, I just thought, man, look up. Our redemption draws near. Time is short. But if you don't know Jesus, 
you're heading toward a time period that is known as the worst time period since mankind was created, the seven-year tribulation, when God shows his wrath to a Christ-rejecting world. You've never experienced that. None of us have. You don't have to be here because 2,000 years ago, Jesus came here and he rescued you. How did he do that? He did it with his own blood that he shed when he was on that cross. Once you realize that he came here to shed blood because he's the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. He's not like a lamb in the Old Testament where they slaughtered the lamb and sprinkled the blood and it covered their sins for a year. Jesus' blood has the power to remove every sin that has ever been committed. Every sin that has ever been committed by everyone. That's how powerful it is. If everyone who's ever lived hit their knees and said, I believe in the power of that blood. I, I'm a sinner. I need payment for this. Thank you, Jesus. That blood could cover every sin that's ever been committed. Sad to say, why does the path to destruction? So most people are going to say, I don't want that blood. I don't need that. You know, which is so sad. But Jesus came here and he died that death on that cross. He died in our place and he shed that precious blood. And then he was buried and he resurrected on the third day. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Your sins and my sins have been paid for by the blood of the lamb, Jesus. So once we say to Jesus, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I need this problem taken care of. And I have faith in your blood that it'll wash me white as snow. It will give me a clean slate. I have faith in your blood, Jesus, and I believe in your finished work that you did on the cross. I believe in your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Once you believe that, you're saved. That's what saves you. Jesus did all the work. All we have to do is understand we need a rescue, that we're sinners, admit we're sinners, and, and cry out to Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus and his finished work and his atoning blood. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a savior and you're the savior of the world and I believe in your blood and I believe in your finished work. Thank you. When that happens, you're saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. You're even born again. Jesus said, behold, I make all things new. Let him make you new by believing in the power of the blood and his finished work. Let him make you new. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be born again. Don't turn it down. Most are going to turn it down. Most that hear this will turn it down. If you're one of those ones who are either so far from Jesus, you don't even know if you ever belong to him, or you've rejected him your whole life, but you're wondering now, is this real? Maybe you're looking around the world. It's real. It's real. He wants to save you, and he did. He rescued you with his blood you don't want to show up on judgment day with your sins still with you kneeling before him on judgment day and he says away from me i never knew you i just can't even imagine what that would sound like in my ears hearing it when you know you're in the presence of god and you're like i rejected the payment for my sins don't do that you will regret it the moment i think even before you I think as you're kneeling before him, you'll already regret it because you'll know your sin is still with you. But he paid for your sins with his blood and he wants to spend eternity with you. So make the right choice today. Choose Jesus. It's the best choice I ever made, bar none. He's my king. He rescued me from myself and my sin. Let him make you new. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to pray for everyone who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and why not? Today's a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.